Hi everyone, and happy Tuesday to you. Welcome to Weather Underground. I'm Mike Bettis. And I'm Alex Wilson. We got lots to talk about tonight. October warmth, chilly Northeast, mm -hmm. and World Series. Yep. How about World Series and snow? Oh too? yes, our Tom Nizzle is going to join us in the weather cave to explain uh, a little bit more about World Series weather. He's gone back through the history books, yeah. deep into the history books. I saw him carrying like seven books. Yes. Poor guy. There like was no internet back in 1903 when they started the World Series, so he had to go through the books. Yeah. We've got to start, though, tonight where the rain is falling right now because he had to return those books to the library. Oh. Then he'll be back in Don't just a moment. Don't want to get a late fee. No, absolutely not. Those libraries come a-calling. Hey, let's take a look at where the rain's coming down right now. Notice, so uh, we've got rain stretching from northern. Look at all those warnings and advisories. The freeze warnings for the areas in pink. That includes Philadelphia tonight. So tonight into tomorrow morning, uh, as opposed to last night, where the big cities, the big metro areas, did stay above the mark. Notice we do not have it for New York City. Uh, and and when we look down towards D.C., it's a frost advisory for you. Also, portions of Delaware, Maryland, Virginia, and a lot of West Virginia, including Huntington and Charleston. Into the early part of the week, there is that dip in the jet stream. You notice the snow earlier falling across parts of uh, northern New England. Even late week, colder air will be uh, sinking north or sinking southward in the northeast as another jet stream dip works through the area. And as Reynolds Wolf says, jet stream dip is delicious. Thursday, we've got 41 in Carolina. 46 in Bangor and Burlington, only in the upper 30s for Bingham to New York. That's your high. 51 for New York on Friday. That is Pittsburgh and Boston, low to mid 50s. So mm -hmm. definitely no question feeling like fall. Yeah, average temperature is a little bit closer to 60 degrees yeah. in Pittsburgh. You throw any little bit of a breeze in there, or mm -hmm. a little bit of rain, you're just chilled to the bone, unfortunately, yeah. this time of year. Yeah, and Dry. you get the gray skies too. Even if it's clear, it's just kind of. It plays on your psyche. Yeah, it does. You know, you can't, it's too early to go into seasonal affective disorder. Yeah, if it's going to be cold, I need that crisp blue sky at yeah. least. But to totally agree. Still. But now, Alex? <sighs> too hot. Well, coming up on Weather Underground, if you slammed on the brakes while driving on a wet road. I just thought of something. Do you ever, does anyone ever put, like, the, the heating pads? Like, if you put one in your backpack, that may not That's be a ingenious. bad idea. Keep your back nice and warm. Keep your core warm. The problem at Syracuse is all the buildings were super hot. Outside, it was freezing. So maybe you had to be a master of layering. It was one or the other. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, that's a place that gets snow. And other parts of the country bracing for snow to come before you know it. We are still some time, you know, from seeing real accumulations that's on the roads. That's right. Until we get that, you need to be cautious, though, of a lesser-known danger on the road also related to the weather. Meteorologist Jen Carfagno shows us what it is. Let's talk about travel. You know, whether you're going back and forth from work or driving to actually go get a view of that great fall color, you know the weather is always a factor, even on a sunny day. So we're going to talk travel because in the fall there's a complicating factor, and that is the leaves. Let's take this car out into reality or augmented reality and talk about how the weather impacts your travel. Now, even when there is no weather falling from the sky on dry conditions, it takes about 80 feet to stop your car if you're driving at 45 miles per hour. And that, of course, is dependent on what kind of tire tread you have, what kind of road conditions they're like, but still 80 feet. Now let's factor in the weather. And you know, when you've got these great leaves on the trees, you know the color's gorgeous, but all of a sudden they're going to come down and they'll cover up the roadway. They'll cover up any potholes or any bad road conditions that are out there. And also when it starts raining, now we've got some complications. So the rain falls, you've got your wipers on, you've got your headlights on, of course, if your wipers are on, and now the leaves start getting wet. And you've heard the saying that wet leaves are slippery as ice. Well, indeed they are. Why is ice slippery? Well, there's actually a film of water right on top of ice. Same thing happens actually with your car's tires on these leaves. So take and when there's layers of these wet leaves, the slick factor is exponential. You try to break on this, you see the swerve, right? All of a sudden, you more than double your stopping distance if you're traveling at 45 miles per hour. And that's not a clean stop, is it? So if you're traveling, even if it stops raining and you've got leaves on the road, you know that it takes hours for wet leaves to dry out. You need to slow down both hands on the wheel. Make sure you have some good tire tread on your car and make sure you stay vigilant because even when it's not raining, when you've got leaves on the roads, it could be slick as ice, especially if they're wet. Haven't we? Oh, we have. And, and it always seems like the time you stop or you need to stop is the time when you find yourself <laughs> on top of the most leaves. So of be course, careful out there. Of course. All right, let's take a look at your fall mm -hmm. foliage. Let's go to the positive side. Near Peak in Southwest Ohio. You're near Peak now around places they like uh, Cincinnati. All right, we'll go out, snap some photos, and send them our way. All right, coming, coming up next here on the show, what are the odds we'll see snow?
Hi everyone and welcome back into Weather Underground. I'm Mike Bettis. And I'm Alex Wilson. We've got a lot happening, but we want to say good evening to a few cities in particular. The storm, as those storms roll east, they're going to bring rain to many parts of New England that still really need it. You know, we did have some hefty rain totals into parts of Massachusetts and other New England states late last week and into the weekend, but we want more. We've been dealing with the drought there into parts of New York as well, and we will have more moisture headed that way. There's the storm system moving east to the midweek and Dr. Forbes just mentioned the severe threat that comes along with it. By the time we get into the end of the week, notice it's moving across parts of the northeast. So while we've got snow up there and to some of the higher elevations of uh, New Hampshire and Vermont, as we get into tomorrow morning, really anything we see is going to be in those areas fairly isolated. But notice by the time we get into Thursday morning, that's when those rain and snow chances ramp up. There's Thursday at six o'clock. Your drive home from Buffalo and Rochester, even Syracuse, looks like it will be wet as you head into the eastern parts of New York and especially the North Country. That's where we will see the snow. Rainfall total forecast for many an inch or less, but once you get into this deeper shade of green, so around I-90 points north, one to two inches likely. Notice northern uh, sections of Massachusetts and into New England. That's where we've got those one to two inch totals, isolated totals on the order of two to three inches. So this would continue to be good news for those areas dealing with the drought in Pittsburgh. Rain begins late Wednesday night, continues into your Thursday. Thursday, not too chilly though, Mike. That's the one saving uh, thing here in Pittsburgh. At least those temps stay around 60. Yeah. Hi everyone, thanks for staying with us. This is hour two of Weather Underground. I'm Mike Bettis. And I'm Alex Wilson, and we still have lots to talk about tonight. October warmth for some chilly here in the Northeast, and the wet pattern in the West. Our own Bob Henson is going to join us to break it down. And we're going to start tonight, though, with where the rain is, where it's falling right now. We're going to active weather through the overnight. Yeah, how about I take it from here, right. and I'll show everybody where we've got rain. It's mostly up into the northern tier right now, uh, through parts of Minnesota and breeze warning. Let's take a look at the real estate. Parts of Massachusetts, um, just about all of Rhode Island, Connecticut, into New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Maryland. Also looking at parts of West Virginia and Virginia. Freeze warnings posted further off to the south. That's where we've got frost advisories. In effect, just about all of Delaware included under the frost advisory. The northern sections up towards Wilmington under a freeze warning. There is that dip in the jet stream for the early part of the week. But notice late week, we've got another one. And that's going to keep the colder air in the picture. We'll also be watching for some high elevation snow into northern New York and New England. Uh, not just to today. But really into the end of the week, look at these highs by Thursday. We're not out of the 30s in Binghamton, New York. By Friday, how about a high of 48 in Buffalo, 44 in Burlington, 40 as good as it gets for Caribou and the big cities holding in the low to mid 50s. So you'll be chilly as well. New York City and Boston, Bangor, Maine in the upper 40s. Buffalo average low is 40. We're staying uh, very close to that, but the average high is where we'll be beneath it tomorrow, Thursday and Friday. Notice Saturday, Ryan, uh, folks want to get outside. That's the day to do it because it's going to be a cold night across parts of the Northeast. Mm -hmm. I mentioned some of those numbers, the frost advisories and the freeze warnings in effect. It's it's going to not feel right because it's been so warm right. lately. So it's going to be a bit of a shock to the system. But at the same time, it will feel so right. Yes, it will. <laughs> Isn't that, it's kind of an oxymoron. Maybe no, sort of. no, but sure. you're right. It's something that we've kind of been spoiled a bit. If you. It's so right, it's wrong. It or is. is it so wrong, it's right. I don't know, one Either or the other. Or. <laughs> let's let's get, ask our personal let's weather station owner. Let's do that. Let's just get to the point here. <laughs> Joseph Becker is a personal weather station owner as well as a National Weather Service train storm spotter. Kent, Maine. So it is going to be another cold night for you guys. Matchups as well. I'm Look glad who's you asked. here. I'm glad you Alex asked. Alex Wilson is here. Alex, why don't you step up to the plate? Let's because do it. it's about the, the pitching, the batting matchups, right? So tonight for the Cubs, it's left handed thrower. John Lester. Okay, now they line up. Okay, they've been batting six, six left-handers. Yeah. In their lineup, pull hitters. We showed you the stats, right? But what's the advantage to John Lester? He loved to throw down and away to left-handed hitters. His pitches so far this year. Look at this. 900. However, the Indians. Step down, darling. The Indians. Oh, their manager Terry oh. Francona. He's batting seven <laughs> righties tonight in the starting lineup for Funny the Indians. About it. I think he had something going on, right? Notice this. How many pitches are, are down and away to righties? 556. What can the chess match continues? But Corey Kluber, right-handed thrower for the Indians, predominantly 
Down and in to left-handed hitters, mm -hmm. Alex Wilson. What does Joe Madden, manager for the Cubs, do? Yep, he puts six lefties in his lineup tonight. <laughs> Advantage, like we still it. think, is to the Cubs. However, how about this little ditty for you? All right. The starting lineup tonight for the Indians against John Lester in his career, four home runs. Zero home Ooh. runs. We'll see how weather and the matchups go tonight. But if weather is the factor, we think John Lester has the advantage. There you have it. Good stuff. Thanks for letting me. Other underground time now for rapid weather, where we put 30 seconds on the clock, and we bring you the top three weather stories of the day. We start with some active weather across the uh, upper Great Lakes and northern tier of the country, mainly into the Dakotas and Minnesota. Notice we do have some scattered rain showers, even thunderstorms through parts of Iowa, getting into sections of far western Illinois. Let's take you though to the heaviest rainfall, and that is through the northeast part of North, or rather South Dakota, the southeast. part part of North Dakota and western sections of Minnesota. Fargo, you have seen the moderate rain on your doorstep and at this point it is coming down. So travel south of there is soggy to say the least. Yes, yeah. it is, unfortunately, for a lot of folks. But the other story that we're following can. But with this dip in the jet stream, Alex, we're going to get some action in the West. Yeah, yeah, we are going to be watching that as well. So uh, a little bit of everything temperature-wise. But uh, there's those highs 10 to 20 degrees above average. I'm going to kind of finish out his story. There we go, stormy West with the storm system uh, riding the upper winds east. So that's going to keep things on the active side across parts of the West. First storm for the mid to late part of the week. Could even draw in some of that tropical moisture from Seymour. Second storm will reach the West Coast by the weekend. So we'll be watching for more wet weather Let through late Sunday. We can see in excess of three to five inches through parts of Northern California and southwestern parts of Oregon, even around Los Angeles, an inch or less. So we are going to get in on some much needed, some much welcome rain through parts of California. So this is about the time we start the rainy season mm -hmm. across the West in California. Well documented drought been going on for years mm -hmm. now, so we'd love to get something plentiful, at least worthwhile, this winter season. We would, you know, every little bit helps. I mean, mm -hmm. we're we are dealing with exceptional drought, the worst category of drought, so it's going to take time, but every one of these systems that comes through and brings some rain, good news. Now, it does come with the problems like the mudslides, the landslides. One thing that was interesting about last year, as you recall, we might be setting up that's favorable for us. Yeah, looking good. And California needs all the rain it can get to its wet season to bring that relief to that five-year drought. October so far has been shaping up to be a good one for the Golden State. Sacramento, Blue Canyon, Eureka have had some of their wettest Octobers to date. So that's good news. That's right. World weather patterns do play a key role in what kind of weather we see on the West Coast. And joining us now from Boulder, talk a little bit more about that, is is Bob Henson, blogger and meteorologist for Weather Underground. Bob, let's talk a little bit more about uh, this pattern, how it is setting up. Uh, do you then you sleep great? You feel wonderful in the morning. Every once in a while, you need you got to admit you need one of those nights where you just go to bed at like 8:45. Notice I brought it up the house. It's, 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 it's going to go to 8:15 yeah. here and then another the second. Yeah. Well, I can't because I don't get off work until 8 o'clock. But 8:45, man, if you can get that done, wow. it's a good night. <laughs> early you're gonna to bed, get up with early the, to rise. Get up with the paper boy in the morning too. Nope, I'm gonna sleep till like 10 a.m. If it's a rainy the day. Milk sour on the front porch. Oh, Alex Wilson, <laughs> off the rails again. Hey, let's uh, crack open our video six pack tonight and show you our top oh six weather videos. This is weather's for the dogs. It's so cute. <laughs> but there's pops I'm of being purple so picky. In there. A lot, of, a lot of good pops in there. Good yeah. stuff. It's a number one video, and thank you all for voting at number one tonight. And coming up, you are sounding off, so we're going to read your tweets, your comments using the hashtag WUTV. Still time to get alerts in them, so everything matches. I wish the jacket matched the pants. Like, I feel yeah. if you're going to go this loud with the ski pants, you got to go, go that gray, loud up yeah. top, right? Or at least black, maybe, just to bring out the brightness. <laughs> He's uh -huh. bright, no matter what. See That's our man, Jim station. Chantori out we there. We love it. He well, loves hey, to ski. Killington Resort got five inches of fresh powder over the weekend. That's significant snowfall method. Some folks, they were able to sneak a run on the slopes today. That was marketing the first day of the season. All right, first ski resort in the east to open. Joining us now from the resort is Michael Joseph. Michael, thanks for being with us. Great day in Killington. Let's talk about the snow you've made and the snow you've gotten from Mother Nature.